we have just one question. Should you upgrade to Windows 11 or not? So, recently I got my hands on the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Edition, their latest model. Well, you know, you know their naming sense, their 2021 model. And it's got basically the top of the line specs. We're talking 11th gen Core i7, 32GB of RAM, RTX 3080, 1TB SSD, all of that. Great stuff. But that's not what we are going to be talking about today. But if you want to look at a full review of this laptop, do stay subscribed. I'll have the full review coming up in the following weeks. But for now, Razer is going to be shipping Windows 11 with all their Blade laptops. And this is actually my first true experience with Windows 11 for about the past couple of days or so. To tell the truth, there are actually quite a lot of things that I really like on Windows 11. But on the flip side, there are also almost equally the same amount of things that I dislike about Windows 11. Or at the very least, makes me question myself or rather question Microsoft and say, why? Now I'm not going to cover everything that Windows 11 has to offer if not this video is going to be half an hour long or even an hour long. But with that said, I will share with you at the very least the things that I do notice with how I use Windows 11 or how I use Windows in general. And so with that said, let's talk about Windows 11 and start off by the things that I do like about it. The whole new look. I do actually quite like it. Your start button, a few new functions, and all the pin apps on your taskbar are now centralized. Click on the start button to get your start menu, and the search bar at the top is pretty straightforward. The pin apps right below it looks and works just like it would on a smartphone, and right below that is the recommended, which usually shows your most recent files or recommended apps. At the bottom, it is also now far easier to get straight to your Microsoft or local account settings, and the usual system settings and power button, so on and so forth. On top of that, if you don't want any of the apps you have that have been pinned, you can actually uninstall them right from the start menu by simply right-clicking and selecting uninstall. All in all, at this point, it's pretty much straightforward and much better compared to Windows 10. I got used to it relatively quickly and I would say that I do actually like the revamped layout. But should you not like the centralized layout, you can always head into the settings and set it to the left instead. Personally, I find the implementation in Windows 11 a lot cleaner and just a tad more intuitive. I also do find myself feeling that it's not that much of a difference per se as I usually press the Windows key and just type to get what I need. That functionality is practically the same in Windows 11 as it was on 10. So regarding the start menu and the layout, it's actually been pretty great for me. Now the next thing that I really like is in the bottom right corner where your key system settings like network and system volume are located. In Windows 10, they are all individually separated. But now, in Windows 11, Microsoft has gone ahead and condensed them into a single window, kind of like your control panel on an iPhone. So now within a single window, you can access your network settings, Bluetooth, system volume, screen brightness, and much more. This is so much more intuitive, and it just makes it easier for you to find what you need and be able to do adjustments or changes fairly quickly. Now the next thing that I really like are the snap layouts, which is arguably one of the most touted new feature for Windows 11. For the longest time, Microsoft or Windows in general generally had just three layouts. Full screen, split screen, or quad split, which you can initiate by pulling a window and moving a mouse to the top, left or right, or the four corners of your screen. Now with the new snap layouts, you have access to twice that. By hovering your mouse over the minimize or maximize button of the window, it will then show you a few more options compared to the traditional tree. You can now have a true way split, a T split, a 75 25, so on and so forth. Simply choose the layout you want, and you will then consolidate all your open windows and you can select which you want to be where you want. In addition, Windows 11 will remember your chosen snap layout as a group. So even if you are doing something else and have those windows closed, you can restore them simply by selecting the restore group. Really awesome, really great. And if you're someone who uses an ultrawide monitor like me on your desktop, three-way split is very much welcome. It's going to be something that I would probably constantly use. And if you're someone who constantly moves about with a laptop and different monitors, Windows 11 will also remember your snap layout no matter where you plug it into. The next thing that I quite like is task view, now located conveniently right beside the start button. 
this allows you to see all your open windows or apps at a glance and right below that, even the number of different virtual desktops which you might have. This really makes it so much easier compared to Windows 10. Switch between different virtual desktops, drag and drop windows, all really simple. So those are some of the key main things that I really like about Windows 11 and there are much more, like the whole overall aesthetic being much more rounder and bubbly, the revamp, slightly revamped system settings, Xbox Game Pass, the widgets, stuff like that. But for now, <laughs> let's fast forward a little. I want to talk about the things that I didn't really like with Windows 11 and some things that are straight out weird to me. The first thing that I immediately noticed and went, why Microsoft, was the moment I wanted to select Google Chrome as my default browser. For some reason, it isn't a simple master toggle switch like in Windows 10. In Windows 11, you are now able to select the default app to open every specific file extension or application, which is fine in itself since it does provide much more granular control. But there isn't a master toggle switch per se. Seriously, Microsoft, why? I just want to switch everything to Chrome or Firefox or any other browser apart from Edge. But why force me to select every single setting one by one? It makes zero sense, especially more so when you're coming from Windows 10. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing that I didn't really like is when you right click stuff and the drop down list that comes out from it. For some reason, Microsoft has decided to simplify the right click menu and that's fine per se. The important functions are there. but what if I wanted to use the additional functions like pin to taskbar or compress and zip? I now require an additional click in order to see the full list and to be very frank, the full list isn't that long in the first place. I really do think that there's no need for the shorter list, not at all. Now the third thing that I really didn't like is with regards to making a local account. Now I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys would just use a Microsoft account at this point and if you do, you will never have this issue. But for me, and when I constantly review new laptops, I don't want to bring over all my cloud data to a laptop which I'll only usually have for about a couple of weeks. So I always make a local account. Now for my experience with the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Edition, I wasn't given the option to create a local account upon first installation of Windows 11. That option simply wasn't there, even though there are sources out there that say otherwise or prove otherwise. So in the end, I had to first log into my own Microsoft account and then when it's all set up and ready, go into the account settings and create a local account instead. Now, it isn't that big of an issue, but I do wish that Microsoft at least standardizes that that option be available on any system that's either shipping or upgrading to Windows 11. But as you can clearly see, the one on my Razorblade 15 Advanced Edition didn't have that. But overall, I would say that my experience with Windows 11 has been pretty positive and personally, I do enjoy the new aesthetic, I do like the new functionalities, all that stuff. And I do think that it's definitely an improvement over Windows 11. But at the same time, I would still say that at this point in time, I would suggest not to upgrade to Windows 11. The OS is still fairly new and there are still a number of bugs here and there such as Windows not recognizing the new rounded corners as actual targets to initiate a resize, and the whole debate about VBS, the virtualization-based security being turned on by default, and affecting performance of your system depending on your configuration, so on and so forth. So while I do like Windows 11, give it some time. Wait till Microsoft fixes all the bugs and when the OS is relatively stable, will I then recommend you to initiate the upgrade. Now, there are definitely a lot more things to Windows 11 that I didn't really get into or talk about, and I didn't really have the time either to really fully experience what Windows 11 has to offer. So if you want to have a better overview of what Windows 11 is at its current state, do check out all your other favorite YouTubers for a better overview of Windows 11. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to, do check out the affiliate links in the description. If you do, thanks for the support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Till the next one. See ya.